So this is how my feather looked like after I molded it. Every feather is going to look different depending on how much clay you use and really how you shape it. So hopefully yours is more peacock like than mine. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my cold porcelain and I put some water on my fingers, just the tips. Just to soften up the clay a little bit because it was getting a little hard and drying already. So I rolled it up into an oval and I'm just going to smush it like this. And we're going to want a clean flat surface to work on. And I'm just going to start smushing it into a shape that's kind of like a teardrop. And I'm just going to try and compare it to my other one to try and get it as much alike as I can. Of course, every time you do this, it's going to turn out a little bit different, but that's fine because peacock feathers are all unique. So, of course, anything handmade is going to be unique as well. And um, now what I'm going to do is just take this clay tool that I have, and it looks like it has two needles or two pins at the ends of it. If you don't have this, you could just use a needle or a pin. So you really don't need um, the same tools as I do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line in the middle so we know where we're supposed to drag from. So taking that tool, I'm just going to start from the line and then drag it outwards. And every time we do a stroke, we're going to want to clean off the clay that is left on the tool. So do a stroke. You see this clay? You want to clean it off. Because if you don't, it's just going to stick back onto the feather and make a mess. Just like this. You see how it's stuck on there? Yeah, that's not good. So if you have a needle or a pin, I don't think you'll have this problem though. Another way that you can um, manage it more is once you're doing it, you could do it slowly and press down on the piece of clay to make sure that the whole thing doesn't like rip off. And then I'm just going to make a hole in the top using this pin thingy that's for jewelry making. So really you could use anything to poke the hole. And then we're done. So for the bracelet I did the same steps except I just put like a, everything's bigger and I put like a strip in the middle. And I'm going to take a clay, roll it out and bend it and place that bent piece on the end of the back of the bracelet. So I have little holes like this. And so now I'm going to start to paint it. You probably want to do something to the back of it like repeat the steps but I didn't. I'm going to be using nail polish and place that all over the feather. You don't have to use nail polish. I don't really recommend using nail polish. Um, but whatever you use really spray paint, um, nail polish or acrylic paints, you want to do it in a very well ventilated area. You don't want to breathe all those chemicals and you're going to want to do it like somewhere in another room in case you want to take a break. You could go back to your room and then continue later on. So then I took this green nail polish and I just placed that in the center and then I'm taking a toothpick and I'm just making the creases and taking off the nail polishes from the creases so that it looks more realistic even though it's not really realistic. Then I'm taking this light purpley um, pink color and I'm just going to make a U on the bottom part of the feather on top of the green. And then I'm just going to make a couple of lines using that same color. Then taking this green color, I'm just going to make, um, it's not really a teardrop, but I'm going to make a shape in the middle of the purple and then in the middle of the green, I'm going to put a light brown and an outline for the brown, I'm going to put gold glitter. So I have something like this and using the gold glitter, I'm going to make lines right above where I did the purple ones. So I have something like this. And now that we have that, I'm going to take an aqua color and just place that, making an oval on the top part. And then taking a navy blue, I'm just going to make a heart-like shape on the bottom of the blue. And you can see that the blue got lighter. I placed a little bit lighter color on top. And now taking a rhinestone while the paint is still wet, 
on the navy blue I'm just going to stick it in the middle of the heart shape so I have something like that so now on top of all of this I'm just going to add a clear top coat of nail polish just to seal everything in and onto the jewelry making part I have my hook and a jump ring and I'm just gonna slide in the bead the bead the <laughs> the beads, the hook, and then close the jump ring. So just slide it through like you would anything else. And I use two jump rings, so this is the first one. And just close that using pliers. And on the second one, I just placed one bead and the peacock feather earring thing that we made. And before I close that one, I'm going to attach it to the other jump ring. And I'm just close that. So this is what I have. That's just what I did for my earring. And then for the bracelet, to make the cord like this, what I did was I placed the crimp bead on the cord, slid the cord through, and I'm going to take the end of the cord, pass it through inside the crimp bead, and crimp the bead. And now I'm done. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. You can use this technique to make anything, uh, really anything. <laughs> I placed some beads on the string for the bracelet because I wanted it to look nice. And in the middle I just used a stud earring that I lost the other pair a while ago. And I just kind of wrapped that around the center. You probably want to paint the back of them just to make everything kind of flawless. But I was lazy, so um, <laughs> try this out using anything if you want to make a hair clip or necklace or anything really. So I hope you guys like this and have a great day. See ya. Mm -hmm.